I knew that Rick McWhorter, All-American 5 Radio, had done a video on his Atwater Kent Model E speaker quite a while ago. Matter of fact, it was uh, back in uh, 2009. And I was kind of hoping that he might have had a photograph of the center of his cone. Well, sure enough, he does. And look what we find right here. This little part right there. That, my friends, is a rubber tube. That is a damper, a short piece of rubber tubing that slides over the reed spring and dampens uh, the vibrations in the center of the spring. Because what, what they want is the front part of the spring to vibrate. They don't want the entire spring to vibrate. So what I've been calling an echoey sound has been that spring vibrating because on this speaker, that piece of tubing was missing when I opened it up. Just I, There was a small piece of black stuff that fell down at the bottom of the, uh, of the speaker housing. And I knew it came from somewhere, but I didn't know what it was. So now I need to go out and find a piece of, uh, hopefully, I'm going to stop off at AutoZone on the way to work today, or O'Reilly, one of the two, and see if I can't find some vacuum a hose that might just slide right over that sound unit. I'll take the sound unit with me and see what they come up with. And here's something else I found on uh, Infotech Data at Water Kent. It has the uh, restoration procedure or repair and adjustment procedure of this uh, sound unit. Here the guy is holding it in his hand. Down here in the right hand corner, in the very low corner, it says rubber damper. Push the small piece of rubber damp, uh, rubber tubing on the flat reed spring, bringing it close to but not touching the unit. They're talking about the sound unit there. Well, I've got this uh, radio torn apart again. Wonderful, huh? <laughs> in addition to working on the sound unit, I'm also working on the volume control. The volume control, uh, which was here, was giving me heartburn. You know, when I got it down to the very low end, it would make all kinds of racket coming out of the speaker. So I knew there was something wrong inside of there, and I just couldn't, you know, I could have told my son, hey, look, you know, keep the volume above a certain point, you'll be okay. That That's not the way to do it. That is not the way to do things. So I asked around before I tore it apart, and I thought it would be, you know, in... I'd have to remove the backing and everything, but the, the two screw two screws hold it on right here and one there at the bottom. They just uh, screw right here to the uh, to the case. Let me get a light down here a little bit better. Uh, there, there's one of the screw holes is right there, and the other one is right there. And it just you know it just screwed right to it just like that. And I took the two screws out. Expecting to have to remove, you know, separate this thing. Well, as after I got the screws out, I turned it around. Looky there, there is no backing on it. So this is going to be a pretty easy repair, which I'll work on later because we're still working on this uh, uh, sound unit. Now, once that rubber, uh, if I can't find uh, a proper fitting piece of uh, vacuum hose to go over this reed spring right here, I only need a very short piece. You know, my God, probably no longer than. Probably no longer than that right there. Just enough to prevent that uh, extraneous vibrations in the center. If that doesn't work, I have plan B. I have here some very, very good high quality heat shrink. And I can cut a small piece, slip it down over the top of that reed spring, and just shrink it down where, you know, at the right spot. This is really good heat shrink, this stuff here. This is an industrial type heat shrink. And hopefully that'll do the job. And if it doesn't, I can always put another piece over to the top of the, the first one and shrink a, the second one down on top of the first one. You know, one way or the other, we're going to prevent those extraneous vibrations in the center of that reed spring. I stopped off at uh, O'Reilly Auto Parts, like I said I would on the way home or on the way to work today. And uh, the only thing they had was was this hose that has really thick walls. <laughs> It's a type of vacuum hose, I guess, that they have, and I was kind of hoping it had something a little thinner. But it did fit the reed. It fits the reed real good. So what I've done is I've cut it into three sizes, three lengths. And I think the one in the middle is going to be the one I need. And uh, the way it works is I have to squeeze it together so it sort of flattens out a little bit and then slip it down over the reed and I think the one in the middle is going to be the one I need it gives me quite a bit of 
reed sticking out to where it'll connect onto the cone, the speaker cone. But if not, if I need a shorter one, then I have this one here. And I'll just slip this one down over there. Right on down there like that. This may be the one I have to go with after all. I don't know. We shall see. We need to back up a little bit on this sound unit. Some of the information I gave you last time was close, but no cigar. Uh, I did a lot of studying. Uh, you know, I watched the uh, the video myself, and I said something does not ring right here. There is something else that has to do with this sound unit that I am missing, and I don't know what it is. Well, I read and I read and I and I and I sat and I looked at this thing and studied it, and lo and behold. <laughs> This thing has two magnets right here, this long thing here that goes down underneath, and the other magnet is right here, and it comes up over the top. And, you know, they're pretty wide. I mean, from here to here on this side, and from here to there on that side. And I hadn't noticed that before because there's just not a whole lot of magnetism in those magnets. <laughs> if I, you know, I was messing around with my screwdriver making adjustments, and it never once grabbed it. I mean, right now, it's like barely hangs on to that screwdriver right here. Just one side's almost non-existent. This top one has is, is got the most magnetism. Anyway, I told you last time that you had to look down through here, you know, to get the reed, you know, even on each side. Nah, that was bogus information. What they were talking about was getting the reed even between these two magnets right there the end of the reed you know see that right there i don't know i wish i had a really good close-up autofocus but i don't but right there so so what that says is this screw right here and this adjustment screw over here they adjust the back part of the reed which centers the front part of the reed the little narrow reed that comes up centers it between these two magnets and I went back and I read about everything, and they never said that. I had to kind of figure it out for myself. So it said, you know, loosen up your two screws, and then tighten one until the reed is just about equal distance. See that reed down there? Let me see if I can get something to prop it up with. All right, maybe this will help a little bit. I don't know. That's the end of the reed right there, right there. So you adjust your screw back here until that reed is centered between the top and bottom magnet. And once you get it just right about in the center where you have equal space on each side, then you go to the other side and, and adjust down, uh, tighten down that adjustment screw. And I'll tell you what, once you snug it down, then you go back and forth between this one and that one and this one and that one, back and forth, just a touch at a time so as not to disturb that reed centering right there. And you Crank it down until she's tight. And that is supposed to work. And here is where I found out about those pole pieces. Those two magnetic pole pieces. Up here, this shows the man testing the strength of those pole pieces. He, he, he took a... Uh, they have an arced piece of metal. It's uh, just a half moon deal that they make. You can make them and they put a little screw thing in the center with a hook on the top. And then they put this hook weight spring in it and then they pull. And what's happening here is this little half moon thing is being held to the magnets. One here and one there. And if it takes less than seven pounds, this is a scale right here. There's a little sliding mechanism here on this for those of you who've never seen one. It's an old-fashioned scale. We had them years ago. And he will pull here it will pull straight up and try to pull that piece of metal loose from those two pieces, from those two magnets down there. And it should take uh, more, uh, seven pounds or more to actually yank it loose. If he cannot get it loose, then it's, good then it's in good shape. But if it pops off in less than seven pounds of pull pressure, as shown on this scale thing right here, then that means you have weak magnets. Well, guess what? I've got weak magnets. <laughs> I believe we've reached a degree of success here, both with the volume control and with our friendly little neighborhood speaker. I'll show you that in a second. The volume control just 
whenever you turned it all the, whenever I turned it all the way to the left all the way it, it would come up here and hit this area here and just make all kinds of terrible noise so when I finally got a chance to sit down here and look at it all I had to do was take this pencil eraser and just clean the top edge of that thing where the uh, the slider rides I gave it a good cleaning it must have had some oil or grease or something on there or just crud from you know, years ago, I hope I wasn't too blurry for all of you to look at, but anyway, I just went ahead and cleaned it just like that. I cleaned it on both sides, got it really looking good. And now I've got good volume control. No more uh, loud, noisy crap, at least not right now. All right, now let's take a look at the speaker. And like I said, we've reached a degree of success. Now what I had to do was take a piece of this black uh, industrial heat shrink. I cut it to size, stuck it over there, and shrunk it down. That was after trying this black hose, this uh, this uh, uh, vacuum line. Did not work at all. Too thick, too much of a pain. I didn't think it would work, but you know it was worth a try. Ultimately, I wound up with surgical tubing. Surgical tubing. I got a little piece of surgical tubing. And I shrunk down the heat shrink right here, and then I ran the surgical tubing over the top of it. You can you see it? In, let me see if you can see it in there. See it in there? And then it's actually pretty tight in there. You can't hardly pull that out unless you get a pair of needle nose pliers. I just took it and slid it right over the top of this thing, like so, and right on up to there. Now let me go ahead and hook up the speaker and we'll turn on the radio and see what happens. Alright, I've got the speaker back on. I do not have the screw holding it in and uh, I have the rubber there and it still has a certain amount of vibration and the reason being is right here is this flexibility of this speaker. Watch when I, I'll pull out the bottom of the speaker with my hand here a little bit. And you'll be able to see the flexibility there. See it moving? That that's, that's totally sucks. Got to have that rigidity. Incident, which is what we're going to have to do next time. Next time we'll focus entirely on the speaker and its uh, strengthening that we're going to do on the back of the speaker. And I got a lot of good suggestions from a lot of people. I, I really appreciate that on how to how to strengthen up this speaker. And uh, I had my own ideas, and I also conferred with another individual who's very, very sharp, very, very sharp. He's he comes up he comes up with ideas sometimes, and I'm I just I get blown away by what, what he comes up with. And we have finally settled on a combination of what I wanted to do, what y'all wanted to do, and what uh, my buddy uh, Gary is his name suggested. And uh, we're going to do that next time. We're going to make this nice and rigid, and uh, it has to be rigid. And we're going to do it on the back side of the speaker. And uh, we're not going to get, it's going to be done back here where nobody will ever see it. And this speaker will never have, you know, a really good sound because of the very weak magnets. But we're just going to have to compromise, you know. Uh, the radio is functioning. The volume control is now good. And if we have a weak sounding speaker, well, tough. You know, <laughs> this thing's 80-some years old. My son will just have to live with it, or he'll have to buy another one, or a parts one that has a better sound unit. This one is just, you know, pretty much had to lick. So thanks for all your inputs on how to repair the speaker. Uh, really good thinking on your part. I read every single one of them. No, I did not respond to them all. Uh, it, it was a solicitation for ideas, and uh, I just sort of bounced around and came up with a with an in-the-middle solution i hope so until next time when we actually fix the speaker or hope to this is john